Today we're installing an IS-20 on the Golf Sport Wagon, the slow wagon. First step you want to do is take the downpipe out. If you haven't seen that video already, watch it now. It's kind of a bear, but we have a downpipe out. So now all we got to do is just take the turbo out. And that is usually not super straightforward, but we'll show you how to do it. All right, first things first, we are going to want to take this engine cover off. I don't know why and leaves it on. If you work on your car regularly, you don't need an engine cover, okay? I don't work on my car right now. So then, uh, so we can start taking the intake off. Actually, so we'll get the uh, intake off and then be back at it. Will we start even? Oh yeah. Okay, that's off. Clock this thing out of here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get these coolant lines out of the way. So T30 here, T30 right here. Couple of hoses. T30 here. Is it, uh, do you want to drain the coolant first? It's the longest one. Tight fit, high dollar. Nothing to see here, folks. If you're a dealer, close your eyes. Still under warranty. It's a five, five millimeter hex for the heat shield bolts. So we got that one out. Yeah, there's one. Just that one, and then uh, the nut up top. So that one's this one right here, and back there, and this nut right here. We have the heat shield right off in the dimes. It's a lot better than doing it in negative twenty. Yeah, this is a peach. Uh, so maybe that's a ten. Is it a ten? I don't know. Ten loosened up. Ten mil. For the uh, feed that is very loose. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! What was that? that on we're opting for removing this coolant hose versus which i think i remember loosening up this because we couldn't quite finagle it off, finagle it off. Yeah, everything's t30s on this makes it easier to work on oh yeah oh yeah there we go now we gotta get all the, the get bracket. this charge pipe off probably since we're up here. And tail. This uh, T30 right here, six millimeter couplers. Oh yeah. Well that's off. All right, now we can start taking the coolant line off the back right now. Should be able to do that. That's the where you want the shallow triple square, I think. This guy right here. Yeah. Actually, there's one more that's terrible, isn't it? I think there's one next to that one. There's one on the bottom. Yeah, I think you can just pop it off with a pry bar and make sure it's not connected to anything else. Bottom side of it here, that 
wiggled right on out. Oh, that is the finger that I shouldn't be trying to do that with. All right, so lower support bracket right there for the turbo. It was a uh, 10 millimeter triple square, a la this guy right here. I think a ratchet for that one might be the move. You broke it loose already, right? Yeah. Oh, what is the deal? How did you do that before? I think it just eventually came. Try, try just taking the thing off the four bolts again. Where, there is another, feels like there's another bolt right here. Oh, yeah, that's the CHRA. That's just holding the turbo together. Compressor. Though. Okay. I don't think there's anything else. Okay, let me just make sure my knee doesn't explode for a second here. <laughs> just wondering if we can't tap that line a little bit, just give a little bit of shock right here. It's that twist. It's like you just need a little bit of the coolant is just like it's gonna run right down your arm and your into your mouth. How it runs down that tunnel. And uh, tabs bending. Amazing. Slide <sighs> drain for a little while. Nah, it's just come right up. No problem. Yeah, it's a half. Hit that arm, probably. No, the cool line. No, the cool line is like halfway out. Yeah, I might just pull up, I think. There you go. All right, so once you have the turbo out of the car, you're gonna to wanna to swap some of the things from the original turbo onto the new turbo if your new turbo didn't come with them. For us, it's gonna be the this discharge turbo muffler thing, coupler. Basically just so that you have something to clamp your charge pipe to. Uh, diverter valve and O2 and then the oil drain and this bracket that supports the turbo on the car. So we're gonna swap those over to the IS-20 real quick and we we able to install it. A couple of tech tips as we're putting the car back together. Once you have your new turbo placed, you will want to prime it with a little bit of oil in the top. So make sure your oil drain on the bottom is connected. Drop some fresh oil in the top of the CHRA and we'll probably pull a, f a fuel pump fuse to crank the motor and hopefully it doesn't start. You don't want the car to get hot. You wanna be able to prime the oil through the turbo before you start the car and get the turbo hot. So crank it a few times, like 20, 30 seconds with the fuel pump fuse off and just start assembling stuff. I think we're gonna check our wastegate actuator voltage with Rostec, make sure that's reading right for this car. It should be preset because it came out of my GTI. Any other things? To get that back coolant line, you really, really, really need a shallow eight millimeter triple square or else you'll be hitting the firewall trying to get that fitting off. We got this little guy here. Other than that, we're gonna start the car up in a little while and go test out the IS-20 on a JB4 E30 tune so it's also a good time to upgrade your spark plugs uh, Dan's gonna be running the RS7 stock plugs the same thing I'm running in my GTI and ran with the IS20 and still run with the IS38 we got them to 24 25 thousand of an inch and then uh, to be ready to rock and roll next upgrade I'd recommend if you're kind of following this path would be an intercooler I think you know the stock intercooler is really small on these you're gonna be pushing more boost and it's really hot out so you're just gonna heat soak a lot faster with the bigger turbo well should be running more efficiently actually to make more power, but any hoosies. All right, before we start the car, we're gonna put coolant back in, filling that back up. Pulled the F10 fuel pump fuse so that we can prime the turbo with oil. We have the down pipe still out, the mid pipe, I guess. The mid pipe's still out. Uh, and I think we should be able to kind of try to prime this, get a few cranks without it kicking over. And then, uh, then we should be able to go test it out. 
All right, moment of truth. We have the downpipe installed. We have coolant back in the car. Now we're gonna try to prime the turbo. F10 pole. I'm gonna turn over the car. If it starts, I'm gonna turn off right away and then try to crank. And then if it starts, turn it off right away and then keep doing that until we can crank it and get oil in the turbo. We topped off the turbo with oil. Dan's adding a little distilled water because he wants his block to freeze and explode in the winter. Um, I think it's all good. stuff in here is dirty. Could be. IS20E30 mix. Pretty Turning tough. up the boost with JV4. It's feeling pretty good. I'd like to look at all these logs. Third gear pole is getting faster and faster every time. 